Hi, I'm Jim Wilson, and I'm co-author with Dana Greenberg and Kate McCone-Sweet of the new book, The New Entrepreneurial Leader. So Dana, why this book now? Similar to many educators out there, similar to probably a lot of what you're reading or everyone's reading in the popular press, there is an opportunity here for business. There is an opportunity for businesses to be engaged in global innovation that create both social and economic opportunity. Old beliefs about profit maximization, shareholder value creation being the sole basis for a business to exist no longer are enough. And what we argue in the book is entrepreneurial leadership is the way to do that. It is the way to expand what a business does and how it's able to create opportunity for its employees, itself, and for the larger society. And how might you begin to teach that in the classroom, Kate? Well, we really think that there's three principles that need to be thought about as we're delivering our classes and our curriculum across. And the first is being able to think, use traditional predictive tools like we train most of our management students in frameworks and quantitative analysis, but also be able to take action when we don't have enough data, when there's great uncertainty, when there's some unknowability about the situation. And so in the classroom, we really are teaching our students how to take action. Um, not just how to analyze data, but how do we actually move forward. Right. Um, we also try to make sure that our students perceive business problems with a new world view. And that's thinking about economic value creation while simultaneously thinking about social and environmental value. And then finally, some of the things that we realize are our, our strongest leaders are ones that understand who they are. They know what their strengths are, they know what their passions are, and that enables them to be successful at engaging others in whatever ventures they go towards. And so we spend some time in our curriculum allowing students to understand who they are. Tied with that, though, is what is the environment that they're working in? What's the context that they're working with? Right. And so that's a better understanding of a global perspective, um, understanding how working in the US may be different than working in China or in Brazil, um, and that the problems faced in those environments may also be different. So understanding how to manage our supply networks within a global, global situation, but also our global customer market. And so tying these three things, cognitive and dexterity, looking about pr predictive and creation approaches, um, thinking about social, economic, and environmental issues, and then thinking, understanding self and context are really what we try to bring throughout our curriculum. What Kate sort of lines up for us so nicely is that when we talk about entrepreneurial leaders, we're really talking about teaching students a very different way of making decisions and taking action and doing it based upon a really different worldview of what business is. So in, in our education model, we have to teach students that different worldview, who they are, and understanding social, economic, and environmental. And then we have to teach them a different way of taking action. And that's where these ideas of cognitive ambidexterity come into play. Right. So which comes first? Would your students generally have a bias coming out of a Babson classroom toward action or toward analysis, would you think? Or do you see? That's a great question. Our goal is that students don't have a bias towards one or the other that their bias is towards understanding the situation and the context in which they're working and they can very clearly determine which is the better approach to start. If they're working in situations where there's a lot of known information, where they can gather a lot of available data, where the landscape, the environment is clear, that's a good situation to do analysis in first and use that analysis to take action. Um, if they're in a situation that demands uncertainty, where there is no unknown data, where they're entering into brand new markets and new opportunities, that's a situation that's going to demand them to take action first, use that to experiment, to gather data, and then move forward from there. So the ideal entrepreneurial leader is adept at both and able to tailor their approach based to the situation. Interesting. So Kate, who do you see as the audience for this book? Well, I think um, the primary audience are people who are thinking about developing management managers. So that could be an academic institution um, like Babson or another that is giving degrees in business, but it also could be internal training and development programs within corporations. I think the real benefit to this, while those are the individuals that are going to be changing curricula or changing delivery of material, the real benefit to this 
is that we're going to graduate or train better leaders. And in the long run, that's a benefit to our students, and it's also the benefit to society. Um, we will be able to create leaders who can change the world that we live in today. One of the things that we saw out there as we looked at the landscape of, of books around management education is there's a lot of really excellent, well-done criticism of management education. But there's not a lot written that gives us an answer. How do we do it differently? Right. And one of the things that was really important to us as we crafted this book was that besides defining entrepreneurial leadership as one of the solutions, how do you do it? How does an individual management educator pick up this book and use it to redesign a class that they're teaching? And whether that's a class in economics or a class in accounting or product innovation, that they can take this book and they can immediately take some ideas from that and apply it directly to their classroom. And then at an institutional level, uh, universities can really take this and say, if we want to do on a global scale change across the university, how do we do that? What are some ideas for really doing systems-wide change? So providing that practical advice is an important part of the book. So to a certain extent, deans and college president or uh, management institution presidents are becoming entrepreneurial leaders themselves. The book is The New Entrepreneurial Leader. Thank you, Dana and Kate. Thank you.